filter. I think it can be heard, but the sound quality, I think it can sound warm because we just do not have it. If I can change the speakers, I need to sound really, really nice. The speakers, the cans, and the ceiling? No, they're right. Yeah, they're up in the ceiling. They're just stealing speech, 8 inch speech. They cost 100 bucks each and they will make you sound a thousand percent better. I have a feeling it is in there. No, I didn't. Thank you. So I need to play it. Here it is. Your mic is free. What's your name? Gene, Gene, can you speak in your mic? Just speak in your mic as you normally do. I move we deny everything. <laughs> Yes, yes. I'm speaking. Oh, that's difficult. I have to keep talking? Do you think I'm Steve, Steve Blair or something? All right. This is my mic. All right. You can't hook into the uh, system. Well, I don't trust the system. Oh, it has it hosed you in the past? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We should, we should yeah. fix that. Yeah. Yes. 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 Thank you. Oh. Okay. <laughs> you, no you read my confidential <laughs> mail? <laughs> I just looked at the two that were saved. Okay. <laughs> Clock by our time. It's uh, it's one minute till, sir. <coughs> it's time. I'm going to call this meeting to order. My mic. All right. Um, thanks for everybody being here today, being on time. Um, because of a potential. Um, I don't want to use the word conflict, per perceptional conflict between the mayor sitting on the uh, Fire Board of Appeals as the chair by charter and uh, discussing what the Fire Board of Appeals did. It's probably inappropriate for him to chair this meeting, so I'm going to chair it. Um, can we have a roll call, please? Mayor Kirkendall, absent excused. Mayor Pro Tem Emerson. Here. Councilman Arnold? Here. Councilman Blair? Here. Councilman Cucneo? Here. Councilman Lozell? Here. Councilwoman Wilcox? Here. You have a quorum. Thank, thank you. And then um, you want to read what the agenda item is, please? Item 1A, discussion, possible action, appeal of City of Prescott PSPRS local board notice of decision in application of, in regarding the application of Julian Ashcroft. Thank you for reading that. Um, Mr. Palladini, would you like to lead this discussion, please, since you are attorney? Certainly. Um, actually, my recommendation is to go into executive session. Do I have a motion to go into executive session? I don't hear a motion to go into executive session, John. So it would die for the lack of a motion. All right. So would you like to lead this discussion, please? Certainly. Um, I will just say that I'm reluctant to provide any legal advice to the council uh, not in executive session so as to uh, not waive any kind of privilege or confidentiality. Um, Mayor Pro Tem Council, this is the opportunity for the City Council to discuss whether or not to appeal um, the City of Prescott P PSPRS local board decision regarding Julian Ashcraft on June 3rd of this year. Uh, we received the formal notice of decision uh, from the local board that uh, in effect is, uh, I guess it's the equivalent of a written judgment by the local board uh, that triggers the appeal period. The appeal, if one were taken, would be the Avapai County Superior Court. Uh, the appeal period, would, it, or the statute requires that any appeal be filed within 35 days of the date of June 3rd. So. Roughly, uh, I don't know the exact date, July 
July 8, give or take. Um, so at, at this point, it's really, it is a council decision whether or not to appeal. Uh, if the city council chooses not to appeal, the decision becomes final subject to the state PSPRS board um, approving the documentation and paperwork uh, regarding eligibility. Now you talk about the PRPS board down in Phoenix? Yes, the state, the, the state board. Mm -hmm. It's my understanding that the, um, uh, again, this is based on media reports that the state board is, is, has no interest in challenging the decision um, and that they will let it stand or not, not take any affirmative action so long as the documentation is in order. Okay. Thank, thank you, John. Open for discussion. Um, Mr. Blair, we'll start with you since you're down at that end. Well, I believe I believe in, in some, some form of benefits, but I'm not sure how anybody can explain to me that somebody gets put in the retirement program when they haven't paid into the retirement program. So I would like to appeal it to figure out from that standpoint, legally, why it is the city is responsible for something somebody never paid into and why the board, I understand that when the gentlemen were at the fire, they should have all been treated the same because they were on an active fire. That's a whole different scenario for me. I don't think the city did their homework prior to relinquishing people out on the, on the fire field to make sure they are all covered equally. That's a problem in itself as far as I'm concerned. But to take somebody and, and proactively put them in a retirement program that never paid into, I have a very distinct problem with that. Let me, let me uh, sort of make a point of clarification as well, that, that the, the um, survivor benefit paid by PSPRS is based on really two factors. One is, is in a line of duty death, um, the statute provides that the, the survivor, and again, this would be a dependent, so a spouse and or children for the most part, um, would be entitled to essentially 100% of that, of sort of the average monthly pay of that firefighter, police officer, or somebody else who's entitled to the survivor benefit. It doesn't, it's not, that amount is not, does not rely on um, any pay-in by the employee. So for instance, um, an employee on, on day one of, a, of, of employment um, who's killed in the line of duty, the survivor would be entitled to a full salary, essentially benefit, um, despite the fact that the employee may pay in an hour or two into the system, in other words, a very nominal amount. The other factor that comes into play in the amount that the survivors receive is, the, is, is what you're talking about. It's the amount that the employee paid in during the course of his or her employment. So for instance, an employee who's been in the system for 10 or 12 years and has been paying in all along, the survivors receive a much higher survivor benefit than somebody who's been in for a month or two who hasn't, who's paid in a very little amount, a, a very nominal amount, um, the, the, there's a difference in, in the payout of the survivor benefit. So there's those two factors that come into play. Well, I will tell you, I appreciate you telling me and I'll reserve the right to change my mind because this is the first time I've heard that. Okay. So if in fact, based upon what you just quoted to me, there are two sole and separate things, then I would support the benefits based upon not hearing that information before. I don't know how many people sitting here have, has heard that. Have you heard that, Greg? I haven't heard that. I have not heard that information. So thank you for sharing it with me. Uh, if it's not based upon the amount that they have put in, as you just stated, then I would support the benefits. So I would well, not. Yeah, part, part, of, part of it is, part of it isn't. And as we know, the, the six original um, hot shots who, 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 survive, who, who the survivors do, do or did receive the, the survivor benefit from the beginning, uh, there's, a, there's a, I can't get into the specific numbers in public, but there, there was a difference between what the newest member um, of, the, of the sort of, what we'll call it the permanent team, the original six, Travis Turbyfield got, uh, you know, or his survivors got, and what 
what uh, the more senior person received. There is a difference because those two factors come That into makes play. sense, so because based upon how many years they're involved in the system, they get paid out differently. Right. But you're, you're sharing with me there's a second part of that scenario, which I had not heard before. So I would support those benefits being given at this point based upon what you just told me. Yeah. Gene, coming down the line, your turn. Thank you, Mr. Blair. Well, I just opened uh, two pieces of attorney-client privilege confidential communications that I haven't had an opportunity to fully digest. One of them has to do with a settlement offer that our discussion today uh, is part of. And I, now I'm thinking uh, we really need to go into executive session to discuss that settlement offer before we make a decision to appeal or not appeal. So may I, may I move that we go into executive session to hear more about this settlement offer? Thank, thank you, uh, Councilwoman. Do I hear a second? Well, may I ask if we can continue to hear what the rest of the council? Well, I, 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 I appreciate your comment, Mr. Blair, but uh, Councilwoman Wilcox may be correct by um, having had this discussion in an executive session with regards to other information that has been put before the council that some may not have gotten an opportunity to digest between last time we had this meeting and now that maybe we need to do that first okay. and that may change the opinion during the process. So do I hear a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, moved and second. I'll say favor of going into executive session. Aye. 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 So let's uh, recess into executive session and have the conversation with our attorney. It's appropriate. Are we going to come back into... Yes, okay. it's agendized to come back into <coughs> for possible action. If I'm just for the record, uh, and it, it was five in favor, one opposed. Councilman Cucnio, I don't know if you heard that. Okay. So it, it, it's Mayor Pro Tem's call whether we want to remain in the room and ask the public to leave, or we want to go downstairs or into a. I would ask the public to leave, and then we'll shut the mics off. And we'll reconvene into executive session with, with only those folks that should be here in the room. So now that we're reconvened, uh, again, let's 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 go down here and talk about what we need to talk about. We had our conversation with uh, Mr. Palladini. Only this time, let's start over here, Mr. Lazell. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, after uh, executive session and and many things that we have uh, looked at and have been presented to me, I just believe it's time to for the community to start healing, and I'm not in favor of. Uh, of pursuing an appeal at this time. Thank you, Chris. You know, I think uh, an issue of this magnitude shouldn't have been on a local level like it was with the fire board. I think it should have went to court. Um, you know, we talk about conflicts of interest all the time. Anytime I talk about a garbage can, I got to leave the room. But, you know, you look at that board and was there conflicts of interest through a lot of that board? On both sides, yeah, I think there was. Um, I was reading the minutes of the notice of decision, and I think it just shows that uh, many of the board members are just exhausted. I was trying to find the right word, and I think that's what it came down to, is that, that they were exhausted. One board member said he had personally heard enough and been through enough. I mean, is that really talking about what we were talking there? Or is that saying, I am so tired and spent, I want this over with? Another board member uh, explained his vote by saying that Andrew Ashcraft was a firefighter with a group of firefighters. Um, he was a firefighter, so he voted yes. I mean, that's that's not wasn't the question there. It wasn't. Uh, of course, he was a firefighter. He was one of the hotshot crews. He went out there, but that wasn't the issue that was supposed to be being discussed. Another board member said he had never had to make a decision like this. Um, 
it was a lot. It was a lot for this board. It was a lot for this community. You know, the things that everybody has gone through over the last year, you know, be a firefighter, be a citizen, be a council member, whatever. I mean, I think we are completely spent by, by the whole thing going on. And uh, it should have went to a superior court just to begin with. It's a neutral third party. I think we send it to superior court and whatever they say, we live with the results. Just a neutral third party and be done with it. Charlie. <clears throat> Mayor Pro Tem, thank you. And, you know, Chris, I agree with you as far as, you know, a neutral third party looking at this that has the opportunity to review all the facts. <coughs> at, at the same time, I agree with Councilman Lazelle that if there's an opportunity to bring this to a closure, um, I would like to see our legal counsel pursue that while we retain our ability to appeal up until the deadline. And that's, you know, that's all I have to say about it. Thank you, Charlie. Jean? I do not support appealing the decision of the board. Um, I think it's time for us to move on, and it will cost the city some money. Uh, but I think it's the right thing to do, to um, stand by the board's decision and to grant the uh, application request of Julianne Ashcroft. Thank you. Councilman Blair. Although I have a lot of questions and I don't think they've all been answered, I don't think any of them have to do with whether somebody was or was not a firefighter, number one. When you get right down to it, I agree with Chris 100%. When you're asking a, a board that's emotionally tied to something to make a logical and rational decision, I think it's impossible for that to happen. So I would suggest somewhere down the line, this city needs to pull their straps up and decide what we need to do to fix the system because it's very apparent something's broke in a lot of different ways. But I will not support the appeal to another board for this firefighter or the ones in the future. Thank you. I reserve my comments for last. Um, I agree there was a lot of things that went south that shouldn't have gone south. At the end of the day, we lost 19 good people that worked on behalf of the city of Prescott. And um, while it wasn't the city of Prescott that deployed them, and it wasn't the city of Prescott that told Jarnell Fire Department and Congress Fire Department to get off of BLM land and let it burn, the result of the actions that were taken subsequent to the night of the fire is ultimately what created a condition that subjected our folks into harm's way at, uh, significant opportunity for things. I agreed with you, Councilman Blair, whether you believe it or not, um, regarding, you know, at the moment they were deployed to fight a fire, they were firemen. If they had lived through the fire, they would have been put back to their regular duty doing what they regularly were doing, whether it was wood cutting or polishing fire trucks or whatever the case it would be. But the moment that they died, they were fighting fires. I will not support an appeal. So, Mr. Palladini, did you get enough of a direction as to what we're asking you to do? Yes, I did. Thank you. Uh, any more comments? We're adjourned.